Our lesson for today is going to be on DNA methylation. Our objective will be to understand the function and effects of methylation and to be able to track and see how that is replicated. So let's start a quick review of the structure of DNA. So there are the four bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And if you'll remember, they always pair. I listed them up in their pairs. An important thing that in methylation is the CPG site, which is a section of DNA where the cytosine is linked to a guanine, by a phosphate, and these are usually methylated, with the exceptions of a CPG island. And a CPG island is a long stretch of CPG sections that are unmethylated. So, what is methylation? Methylation is the addition of a methyl group. This is, this is an example of a methyl group right there. Uh, that is attached to a CPG site on uh, a strand of DNA. They always methylate in pairs, so they'll always be close to each other. So, the function of methylation is important in embryonic development because it helps with differentiating the cell. And what I have here is basically a picture of a stem cell that can be differentiated in any way. So, uh, when genes are methylated, they are restricted. That means they are not expressed. And this can be extremely helpful in suppressing genes that can be harmful to your body. There are two ways that methylation can go wrong. You can be over-methylated, which means that genes that should be expressed are not being expressed, and that's inappropriate silencing, and that can cause a lot of different issues. Uh, the other way is that genes that should be silenced are not, so you're expressing traits that <coughs> should typically in most people be silenced. So, real quick, let's do a brainstorm. Um, what do you think would happen if a tumor suppressing gene was silenced? Methylation happens when a methyl group attaches to a CPG site, and that is done with the help of an enzyme called the Novo DNMT, which attaches the methyl group to the cytosine base. And this is a kind of complicated diagram because it shows a couple other processes that happen, but you start out with this unmethylated gene. And the uh, de novo DNMT attaches the methyl group to the end here, which makes it methylated. And like I mentioned earlier, so to maintain methylation, it has to be copied during replication. So you take it would take a gene that is methylated here and here would split, and the methylation would split as well, so there would only be one methylated CPG site on each of the strands, and a maintenance DNMT would come in and add the methylation to the new strand. So that's how methylation is copied. So this is another look, this is a general overview. Um, methylation can be reversed, which is a different topic that I won't go into, but to methylate a gene, you use the, it, you use the de novo, and it adds the new methylation, so there is no methylation here, but it is here. And when it is split, you can see the methylation.
translation split as well, and it is added by the maintenance. Oh, I crossed it up. So it's added by the maintenance. That should be the end of this presentation. So I'd like you guys now to take some time to work on the handout that I gave you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. It just basically asks you to identify methylated genes and then to track methylation. <laughs> do you guys want to go over this? Yeah. yeah. Do you need more time to work on it, or do you want to go over it right now?
Thank you, Julie, for helping out. Any other questions? I want to thank you guys for being a great class, and thank you for letting me do this.